guys, this is going to be a quick video just going over the upgraded scale look shocks that I've got going into my hopper build. Now these are nothing uh, nothing crazy, just the regular uh, scale look shocks that you can buy from Candy and Chrome. However, I do adjust the springs so that they function. Now the key with adding functional springs is that you want to you still want the car to have the right amount of bounce and not have the springs too squishy, too soft, or too stiff, either way. So I have a very, very different setup on the front springs than I do for the rear. Uh, they're the same height. Like uh, I do extend the, the shock a little bit because the scale look shocks are out the package are a little bit short. It's almost as long as the original, but not just not quite you'll see the difference right here so hold on so i mean it's almost as long but just not quite but gets the job done uh, i will be using uh, the longer servo horns in the rear for when we do cut the chassis so the, the millimeter or two that i lose in height uh, i'm gonna be i'm gonna get that back with the uh with the servo horns but that's still further on for the moment what i want to do is i want to make sure that when i do put these on that they work at least as good if not better than stock so when putting the kit together i keep a, a stock shock on one side and i put my modified shock on the other and as i adjust the spring rates i'm trying to make it so that the springs work the same as the stock spring Now we see, basically you have one side modified shock and the other side is the uh, original shock. And we have the same amount of springiness inside the kit on pretty much both sides. I mean, it, might, it seems like it's a tad springier on, on this side over here. But it's not so springy that it's not able to hold the weight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the second shock on there so you can see that. But it's not compressing the stock all that much. However, if you want to make the shocks bounce a little bit. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so that uh, you can... Definitely see that there's. All right, so we're back with the uh, shocks back in the kit now. At this level here, the the car is sitting. There's not much room for the sprint, the shocks to actually move. But once you pop it up, like first you notice the level is good, and that my shocks are sitting at the full ride height. They're not like compressed down or nothing. So I got the springs really at a good. At a good setting, setting to still bounce around. But not too much, you know. So, so it's very important that you, know, you, you do get your stuff set up to at least perform as good, if not better, than shock. And all, all this is is a, an internal spring. I got a whole bunch of spring rates and I just cut them down to size using different spring thickness to adjust how stiff the springs are. And after a lot of messing around and playing with it, this is basically where the spring rate setup that I've come up for the back. And this over here is what I've come up with for the front. So we got a great bouncy stiffness for the front. And still uh, some wiggle, some wiggle in the rear so that, you know, the, the, the RC has that good movement that you know my RC is to have. So yeah, so with that, that's going to be the, 
basically just the, the next step, which was the shock upgrade. Uh, in the next video, what I'm actually going to be doing is the transmission. We're going to open that up, get some new ABEC 5 bearings in there, and we're going to put in the, uh, the new drive shaft right here. So that's going to be uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.